I'm Lynn Schneider and this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, January 1st, 2014. On today's show, we'll learn about the unique art technique of live figure drawing. Mary Franklin previews a class offered by Lee Memorial Health Systems and we'll discover a new game coming to the Shell Point bocce court. It's called Golf Croquet. But first, a Happy New Year to our entire Shell Point family. We want to remind you that all Shell Point offices are closed today, which means that sign up for all of January's activities will take place tomorrow at the Island and Woodland Service Desk starting at 8.15 a.m. And there are plenty of events and activities that are worth signing up for. All this week, we're previewing classes from the 2014 semester of the Academy of Lifelong Learning. Starting up next week is our Intermediate Bridge class with instructor Susan Willoughby. Now this class is not for beginners who want to pick up the game. It's for current bridge players who want to take their game to the next level. Sign up for Intermediate Bridge, which begins next Wednesday, January 8th at 1 p.m. in the Game Room at the Woodlands. We also have a fascinating art class taught by Herb Sklar. Learning how to draw people is a lot easier when you have a live model to reference, and that's just what we're providing at this Academy Art class, Live Figure Drawing. It starts next Wednesday, January 8th at 1 p.m. in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. Here's Herb Sklar to tell us more. Hi everyone, I'm Terry Koleth and I'm here today with Herb Sklar. We are talking about a class in the Spring Academy of Lifelong Learning. This one is called Live Figure Drawing using charcoal and pencils. Thanks right. for joining me, Herb. Oh, you're welcome. welcome. What is the value of drawing the figure? I know we're going to have residents who are going to model. Right. Um, they're going to be making, striking various poses, wearing various costumes. I think uh, it's something we don't get to do too often. Right. And, and it's a wonderful way of training your eye. And when you think about it, the, the uh, Renaissance artists, th they did this for years, figure drawing. Matter of fact, um, Art school in, in those days, right up to the ninth turn of the century, uh, was for six years or more. And it wasn't until 1920s that they allowed women in the figure drawing class. Interesting. Yeah. So, but, but getting back to our class, this is just going to be a kind of a freewheeling, wonderful experience. Our models will sit down and we're going to do like a 10 second pose. Well, in 10 seconds, you can't do very much. You've got to use the gesture. So, we'll go through and we'll show where the backbone connects to the head and and so we'll start off with gesture uh, drawings which kind of warms you up and we'll go 20 seconds and 60 seconds and eventually before the session is over we'll have like a 30 to 40 minute mm -hmm. long pose so those who want to do a little bit more detail can but if you don't want to do detail and you want to have fun you can just catch the rhythm you know just with that charcoal and and a charcoal on paper it's just fun you just do it and go to the next one you know it's uh it's wonderful and and isn't it also i mean so much easier to appreciate proportion when you're actually looking at a human being. Yeah, we'll go into that in some detail. Uh, I will pass out some sheets about proportions, but I won't give it to you the first day. I want everybody to come to class fresh and, and just start out, but they will leave with a handout that will help. And we go through uh, very careful proportions of the face as well as the body. There's approximately eight heads to a body as we get a little older, around our age, they're probably seven to seven and a half. And when you draw a figure model, a fashion model, it's nine heads that get that elongated look. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But uh, it'll be fun. It'll be, should be fun. Okay, so you, you come starting out real loosely, getting the gestures, right. and then develop through the six Wednesdays. Right, and, and we'll get into some real detail. And anybody who wants to pose in the class, they should feel free. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We have asked some of our more athletic residents if they would pose for us, but we're looking for models. Right. We can't have enough yes. because you do hold a pose. Okay, so if anybody wants to model, male or female, if they would call you, that'd be great. That would be great. Okay, call soon because this class begins Wednesday, January 8th. Sign up is required at either service desk, an opportunity to do live figure drawing using charcoal and pencils. This week, we're also previewing the semester's classes in the Health Connection. Of course, even if we live healthy, we can't always avoid chronic health conditions. 
heart trouble, lung problems, muscle fatigue, any one of these long-term conditions can really overwhelm your life unless you learn how to turn the negatives into positives. A new class from Lee Memorial Health System provides those techniques. They call the program It's All About You. The class is coming to Shell Point starting next Wednesday, January the 8th at 1.15 p.m. in the Manatee Room on the Island. Let's hear why you should sign up. I'm Mary Franklin here with an impactful Health Connections program coming to Shell Point. The title of this program is It's All About You, Chronic Disease Self-Management Program. And I'm here today with Joyce Hall from Lee Memorial. Thanks for coming here today, Joyce. Well, thanks for inviting me, Mary. I really appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about your role with Lee Memorial. I am the Community Health Program Coordinator for Lee Memorial. Okay. And this is a program that we started in February of this year. Mm -hmm. And it is geared towards people who have chronic health conditions. Mm -hmm. The title we chose, It's All About You, is because it truly is all about you mm -hmm. and the decisions that you make in regard to your health and wellness, and that's for each one of us. Mm -hmm. This is a research-based program that was developed by Stanford University, mm -hmm. so we're very excited to uh, be working with Stanford and offering the program to our Lee County residents. Okay. What are some of the topics that you're going to be touching on over the six weeks? We talk about a myriad of things. Mm -hmm. I think the key is that it's not a sit, didactic, listen mm -hmm. workshop. Right. It is very participatory. It is lively. There's a lot of discussion. We talk about things that are common to people who have chronic health conditions, mm -hmm. such as sleep problems, fatigue, stress, anxiety, uh, difficult emotions. Mm -hmm. And we talk about ways to handle those. We teach them skills that we call using your mind. Mm -hmm. We teach them action plans. Mm -hmm. They learn how to, um, a better tool for decision making. Mm -hmm. And so it's, uh, it's quite a dynamic workshop. Mm -hmm. And we are very excited to be working with Shell Point on this program. Uh, the goal of the program is to help each person who attends be a better self-manager of their health, mm -hmm. to understand the importance of exercise and the impact that has on your health. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about nutrition mm -hmm. and reading food labels. Mm -hmm. We talk about the different types of fat. Mm -hmm. We talk about the plate method for looking right. at your uh, food intake mm -hmm. and how much you should be eating of each type of food. Mm -hmm. Uh, throughout the different programs. We also talk about medication using and working with your healthcare professional okay. because that's a big part of being a self-manager is taking the initiative and bringing things up to your healthcare professional right. and working with them to ensure that you receive the care you need right. uh, but yet that you are in charge. Okay. And it's for anyone who has a chronic disease, correct? It is not geared to any specific disease. Mm -hmm. It's really for anyone who have a, has a chronic health condition. So anyone can sign up that has a chronic disease. What if they would like their spouse or a friend to come with them mm -hmm. to learn along? Is that okay? Yes, it is. In fact, we encourage individuals who have chronic health conditions to bring a support person mm -hmm. with them. They would have to register for mm -hmm. the program, and they would be expected to participate in the activities. I understand each participant receives a free book? Yes, actually they do. It's a wonderful resource guide. It mm -hmm. covers more material than we could cover in the workshops, mm -hmm. but it does have all the material that we cover in the workshops in here as well. Mm -hmm. And the National Council on Aging has indicated that this book is an indispensable guide for people of all ages who have a chronic mental or physical health condition. So I think that they will really benefit from the homework assignments that are part of the actual um, workshop. That's going to be a very powerful tool for many to learn. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to sign up for this program, you can do so at either of the service desks. And um, it's going to be an, an important one. So if you'd like to sign up, the space is limited. We have to have a minimum of 10 and a maximum of 20. So please sign up either service desk by giving us a call or stopping by. Joyce Hall, thank you for being here today. I appreciate you coming out. And I'm Mary Franklin for Health Connections. Make it a happy and healthy day. 
Here at Shell Point, we have so many beautiful green spaces that it's only natural to enjoy an outdoor activity in January. One of those spaces is the bocce court at the Woodlands, which will host a new game beginning next week. It's called Golf Croquet. We asked Leslie Brand to give us a beginner's class in golf croquet. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Leslie Brand and I'm here with Jack and Barbara and Jean and we are here at the bocce courts, but it doesn't necessarily look like bocce. So, Jack, what do we have here today? We have a, a golf croquet set up here, and uh, we started to play this last year, and Barbara and Jean were my two private best students, and they regularly beat me, which I don't like at all. So what exactly is golf croquet? Okay, there's probably three types of croquet. One of which most people are familiar with, which is the garden croquet which you play in the backyard of your home. And then you have more of a professional type thing, which is called association croquet, which is a nine wicket type. And then we have golf croquet, which is fairly new, starting in about 1970s. What exactly makes golf croquet different than garden croquet? Well, garden croquet is primarily paid, played in the back of your home on a grass area. And it doesn't necessarily have to be short grass. It can be whatever is prevalent in, in that household. Um, and, and then most of the time it was like nine wicket croquet. We only have six wickets as opposed to nine. And it's a much more um, collegiate type of, of a sport. And it's very easy to play, much easier to play. It's faster and everybody gets an equal time of participation. Whereas in the regular croquet, uh, one person can dominate the whole, the whole session. But in golf croquet, each person gets one shot at a time and uh, it's very friendly. Now Jack, what is some good strategies for golf croquet and a little bit of the rules? Okay, well well, first we start off at one of the corners, usually the corner down there, and you'll see there's six wickets and you go across to the first wicket and the first person that goes through the wicket gets a point. Unlike the other croquet where everybody has to go through the wicket, in golf croquet only one person has to go through the wicket and they get one point. The next thing people say, well, how long, long does the game last? Well, you decide that before you even start. You can say we're going to play for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and whoever has the most points wins. Or you can say whoever gets the first number of points, four points or five points or six points or seven points. Do you already have to know how to play golf croquet or is someone going to be here to teach everyone how to play? I'll be here uh, most Friday mornings, particularly in the beginning. Uh, to lend assistance to teach people how to play. Very easy to learn, but uh, I'll be here to, to help them out, and Jean and, and Barbara will be here too, probably, and they, and they can help out too. Now, Jean, what made you decide to play golf croquet? Well, I'm an ex-golfer, and I haven't been able to play golf, so I thought, geez, wonder what this golf croquet is. So I came out, and it's altogether different. It has nothing to do as far as, far as I'm concerned about golf. Uh, but I just got hooked. Well, my coordination isn't that good, so golf is not my sport. So I thought, well, I think I can hit a ball in the hole, so <laughs> we'll try that. So I just enjoy it for the fun and the getting around with all the other people, you know. Now, Golf Croquet is going to be starting up in January the 10th at 10.15 a.m., and everyone is welcome to come out. You can come and go as you please. It will be every Friday morning. So please feel free, come out, learn golf croquet, and have some fun. Well folks, because it's New Year's Day, most activities are off today. But some are still going and our dining venues are all still open. Let's learn more about today's happenings, menus, and church news. Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Bev Chandley, and I'm going to go over a few activities that we have offered here at Shell Point today. But before we start, I want to remind you the administrative offices are closed. We're going to start out with 9 o'clock. Ben's Match Play Doubles Tennis will be down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Also at 9 o'clock, we have the Watercolor Group with Phil Hilton. That will be in the art studio in the tunnel. At 10.15, the Model Yacht Sailing Club will be sailing their boats down at the Woodlands Pond. Then we move to 1 o'clock where chess will be played in the library lounge on the island. Thank you for joining me this New Year's Day and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Menus for your New Year's Day. In the Crystal Room, they're featuring a New Year's Day buffet. And for dinner, it's the pasta buffet for $12.95. And the soup of the day is minestrone. 
In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is Monte Cristo with fries for seven twenty-five. The dinner special is grilled shrimp for eight twenty-five. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill are Sole Bonne Femme for fourteen ninety-five, or Chicken Bruschetta for thirteen ninety-five. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, the senior pastor, and we at the Village Church want to wish you a very happy new year. You know, this is my first new year here in Florida, as well as at Shell Point, and I'm really looking forward to a rather unusual one. Most of the time up north, New Year's is associated with snow. In fact, usually the first significant snowfall of the year shows up about this time of the year, the first of the year. But whether it's cold up there or warm down here, New Year's brings to mind a meaning that is consistent in both locales. It's a great time to look back and see where we've been. In other words, do a little self-examination or a little assessment. But most importantly, it's a great time to look ahead, make some plans, set some priorities. And that's where New Year's resolutions usually come in. Unfortunately, most of the time we spend New Year's making resolutions and the rest of the year breaking them. Uh, perhaps you've already made some resolutions. Uh, some make them about health care issues, and some make them about the kinds of activities we want to be involved in. Uh, some about restoring relationships with family, and some about friends. But I'm inclined to think that all these resolutions are positive things. Even when we don't fulfill them, they usually set us off in a proper direction, and we end up doing more and better than if we had simply allowed nature to take its course. But in addition to plans and resolutions, there is the matter of priorities. I'm always struck by how focused the Apostle Paul is on his priorities. He was fixed upon them like flies to flypaper. Nothing would distract him or knock him off of his intentions. And one of the ways he expressed those priorities is found in Philippians chapter 3, where he says, But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is a man who knows what his vocation is, and he would allow nothing to stand in the way of it. And I'll mention what I think is involved in that upward call of God in a moment, but first let me say something about the notion of vocation. Vocation is not a job. Vocation is a calling. Its Latin root is the same root from which we derive our word vocal. And sometimes our vocation might be our job. That's certainly the case with mine here at the Village Church. I consider my employment here at the Village Church to be a calling or a vocation. But usually our vocation is something else. It's a calling from God to be a certain kind of person and do a certain kind of thing. And so even if you're retired, that doesn't mean that you don't have a vocation. Your vocation may be different today than it was when you were younger, raising a family, seeking to make a mark in the world. But today you are still very useful in God's economy. He has a purpose for you in these years. You too have a vocation. You have a calling. So I would urge you to consider what your vocation is, what God is calling you to do in the coming year. More importantly, who is God calling you to be in the coming year? For Paul, his primary calling was to know God and to know Christ Jesus. That was to him even more important than his theological writing, more important than his pastoral ministry, even more important than his missionary work. Listen to how he put it just a few verses earlier in the passage that I just read. He says, Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. And then here is how he expresses it most clearly, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. 
I would urge you to emulate Paul in this quest during the coming year. Seek to know Christ in every way possible, even by sharing in his sufferings, so that you may attain the resurrection. Make knowing Christ your priority, your calling, your vocation, even along with all the other things that you have resolved to do during 2014. And while I can't promise you an easy year, I can promise you that you'll have a fulfilled year, a satisfying year, a year without regret, a re year for which you can give thanks to the Lord. In the meantime, have a very happy new year, and God bless each and every one of you, and we hope to see you soon. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we preview all the technology classes coming up in the 2014 Academy. We'll also discuss the senior fitness test. Are you up for the challenge? We'll find out on tomorrow's show. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, January 1st, 2014. I'm Lynn Schneider, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.